Motorcycles are dangerous. We all know this, but we can use quite a few different items that allow us to mitigate those risks, especially in regards to safety. So let us cross this desert together, my children, and wade into the hot granules of motorcycle safety items that a lot of riders overlook. Welcome back to another episode of Yammy Noob. Hi, yes, hello, it is me, the dulcet voice you've come to know and love. Back in our original format, we tried out the green screen and we heard you loud and clear. You prefer this format, or maybe you don't. Let me know in the comments below, I am curious to know. I personally love appearing in my own videos, but maybe you don't like seeing my face. And speaking of safety, today's video is proudly supported by none other than Manscaped. You guys have seen it, your dude Clammy Pube uses it, and it is without a doubt the finest and safest shaver you can apply to your nuts. That's correct, Manscaped is the only brand dedicated to below the belt grooming for guys. And you might be saying, that's ridiculous. Why would I want to buy a shaver for my ball sack? Well, eight in 10 partners find a groom downstairs more attractive and it's just more hygienic too. For a limited time, Yam Nuts can get 20% off in free shipping with code YAM20 and by using the link in the description below. Get your downstairs sorted out. Watch Yammy Noob, subscribe to the channel, Turbo Busa, let's go. Number one, frame sliders. There is a lot of content out there on the good, the bad, and the ugly side of frame sliders, or crash bobbins, fairing protectors, bone savers, whatever you call them. There's a lot of stuff out there on them and they tend to get a bad rep. Part of that lies with people having unrealistic expectations. Put a pair of frame sliders on a bike and suddenly riders feel like there's a magical force field around them that will keep them and their bikes completely safe from harm. You couldn't be more wrong. Frame sliders are there to provide some protection for your bike. They're meant to absorb the bulk of the impact and damage in the event your bike does end up taking a tumble. They also keep you and your body parts from acting as a human frame slider. So that's a pretty cool bonus. But it's important to remember that there are outside factors at work when or if your bike decides to jump out from under you. All of those variables mean riders are going to receive different results from their frame sliders, so just try not to lose sight of what they're really for and you should be okay. And as the name implies, they're designed to slide instead of your frame and they're bolted to the frame. One of the most expensive items to repair on a motorcycle is a bent frame and honestly, most repair shops will chalk it up as a total loss if you've got major frame damage. So frame sliders are there for you when you want to make sure your ride doesn't get completely ganked up. The elephant in the room is that frame sliders cause your bike to flip and tumble since it's a solid object protruding from your motorcycle. Now, that can happen since crashes are subject to infinite variability. However, since the parts are named sliders and designed to be a one-time use in an asphalt situation where they can't dig in, it's pretty unlikely that your frame sliders will cause the bike to flip or tumble. Number two, high visibility. Some of my little squidlets are out there probably scratching their heads and thinking, but Papa Yam, you told us to ride invisibly. What gives? Well, you dirty scoundrels, riding invisibly is a defensive riding technique where you ride as though you are invisible to other drivers. So you do not try to become invisible, you simply ride under the assumption that no one can see you. What you want though is for people to see you, so don't be the noob who overlooks high visibility gear. This one is one of the easiest things you can get your hands on, and you can get reflective doodads in some pretty unexpected places. It just depends on how desperate you are to keep it cheap. You can buy a roll of reflective duct tape for less than $5 and strategically place a few pieces on your current gear. Reflective vests can be found for about $20 or so and jackets get a little more expensive but usually come with protective waterproof treatment and they're great for when it rains and you want to be seen and dry. The important thing to note here as well is that contrast matters. You might think that wearing all highlighter pen yellow will save you but in reality you might still be overlooked if you're monocolored. Be sure to add sprinkles of high visibility onto your gear. I personally like wearing white and black so I usually have a black helmet or a white helmet on opposed color gear. It helps if your motorcycle is a color as well instead of black, but don't choose your bike's color based on visibility. The moral of the story here is that there's no reason for you to not have something to promote visibility. Will reflective tape on your helmet look silly? Maybe. But if you look silly that means someone can see you, and being seen saves lives. Number 3. Communication Devices most riders with cruisers will have a communication device, but for some reason I don't see that many sport bike riders with one. In this day and age of cell phones, it's easy to get caught up in feeling like you're constantly connected with everyone around you 24-7 until you're not. You definitely should not be trying to operate your cell phone while you're riding. That's how you end up killing yourself or someone else, so definitely put the phone away. Even though we have X mounts nowadays and people love placing their phones on there, just keep it in your pocket in my opinion. There's plenty of communicators to choose from, but we here at Yamanube do recommend Cardo systems 
system since they've won several shootouts and are the original motorcycle communicator manufacturer. Seriously, they invented the category back in 04. A communication device that's designed for motorcyclists can help you stay in touch during group rides. If something happens and you don't have cell signal, or if you just want to stay up to date on the plans with the riders around you. They're pretty nifty actually. Number 4. LED Lights this is another easy fix that makes me shake my head a little, and it's not that people aren't using LED lights because they're hard to find or crazy expensive. It's just one of those things where as long as the headlights are working, why would you give an extra thought to it, right? LED lights are relatively inexpensive. They're just as readily available as regular headlights, blinker bulbs, brake lights, etc., and it's a pretty quick job to swap them out. Unless your name is Yami, then all of a sudden every single thing you attempt to do to a motorcycle causes you consternation and annoyance, and will take approximately three extra hours to complete because your brain just doesn't work like a normal person and everything is difficult. Ooh, okay. Okay. Deep breath. We're back. If you don't know, LED lights are brighter than regular bulbs, which increases your visibility, especially during the daytime. They also last longer, so that's a plus. One thing to point out though is if you do end up going LED, you will encounter the dreaded hyperflash issue, where the turn signal bulbs flash faster than they're used to because the LED uses a different level of resistance than the original incandescent bulb. Most riders don't really mind this problem, but if you do, it's a simple fix with a new relay. Hyperflash solved. Number five. Hearing protection. I've talked about hearing protection before in our seven more motorcycle myths series, so if you haven't seen it yet, go check it out. If you have seen it, and why wouldn't you have, then you already know that there is some serious hubbub that goes around wearing hearing protection while you're riding. But the fact is, riding without hearing protection is actually more dangerous than riding with hearing protection, and you can buy a set of earplugs for about $5. And that's if you splurge and get the upgraded ones that come with the fancy case to put them in. Whether you're on a sports bike or a cruiser or something that falls in between, riders spend a lot of time on a high decibel revving machine surrounded by noise, traffic, and wind. When you're exposed to loud noises for extended periods of time, you'll hit the temporary threshold shift, or TTS, which is actually a temporary deafness caused by prolonged exposure to loud noises. So it's not like you're hearing 100% while you're riding anyway. And even though most folks think their loud engine is causing their hearing damage, it is in fact the prolonged exposure to wind noise that causes the damage. Wind is way louder than your bike could ever hope to be when you're out riding. Riders feel the need to be able to hear everything around them when they're riding, and with good reason. But wearing hearing protection doesn't mean you'll miss out on what's around you. It just reduces high decibel and high frequency noises, so that it doesn't cause permanent damage to your hearing. Keep in mind that while TTS is temporary, eventually the damage will become permanent. So spend the $5 and protect your ears. I'm a huge advocate of wearing earplugs when you ride, so go plug your holes. And after you've plugged them, drop me a comment letting me know that you plugged your hole. And remember kids, keep it classy. I feel like I'm gonna regret saying that. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna regret that one. Now it's time for Comments of the Week, where I find the spiciest, loveliest, and strangest comments you people leave me. If you wanna be featured, there's only one way, drop a comment below. Now let's do this. Papa Yam, you fill the void of fatherhood since my dad left me. Oh, Brandon, come into Papa's arms. I will carry you across the river into the promised land of Turbo Booses and Rossi. But for real, parapersonal relationships and single parenting is a problem that I can't even solve. Raj 8 ct writes, Begins slow clap, which crescendos into an uproar of orgasmic cheering, then settles as the crowd rests on the floor, twitching and shaking from the sexual bliss that was this video. So this one came from my 50 Facts You Don't Know About Motorcycles video, which if you haven't seen, you should go and check it out. It's a classic yammy shitpost, and I had loads of fun making it, but thank you Proj 8 ct Povilas Kazmowskis writes, Hey Yam, could you make a best A2 bikes for us Euro bros? This video is officially on the calendar for this month. It will be released. I'm just doing some research around it since I live in America and I have no clue about A2 bikes, but will do my best which makes it kind of ironic that you guys want my opinion on it. And that's gonna do it for today, my boys. I would be a pretty big jerk to end this video and not talk about either of the bikes we're giving away. As you probably or should know, I'm restoring and building up a CB900, affectionately dubbed the Hentai Hornet, and giving it away. I'm also giving away a super sexy FC07, so if you're not into Hentai, but you've got a thing for redheads, check out the link in the description to learn how you can jump on board for a chance to win one of these beautiful babes. Seriously, jump on this one. I've literally doubled your chances to win a motorcycle. Why wouldn't you take advantage? of that. Do you not like having nice things? Why won't you just let me love you? All right, that escalated a little too fast. And that's a probably good stopping point for today's video. As always, thanks for stopping by and supporting the channel. My ego thrives on your viewership, thumbs up, and comments. So please, for the love of Rossi, stroke it. You know the drill by now, unless you're new around here. And in that case, be sure to hit the subscribe button while you're at it. Don't forget to turn your notifications on. You can be the first in the know when we post new treasure for your listening pleasure. And all you've got to do is click on that bell. 
Why does that always sound like a euphemism? I'll catch you guys next time. See you later. Fact. Ernest Hemingway received 36 shock treatments for depression, some of which impaired his memory so bad that he couldn't even remember his own name. The man, the myth, the legend, even if he did forget himself. Goodbye.